Here a denominator, three zeros are zero. Sin zero is zero. You'll get zero by zero. What is limit theta tends to zero? Sin theta by theta one. Limit theta tends to zero. Tan theta by theta one. Five multiply five times and then you multiply with six, you'll get the answer. If you have limit of f of x by g of x, then you can apply limit separately for numerator. You should not get zero by zero. You should not get infinity by infinity. You should not get zero power zero. Welcome to the session, dear students. Today, I am going to start an important chapter that is continuity and differentiability. So, in your mathematics, under the unit calculus, we have a chapter called continuity and differentiability. This is one of the key chapters which helps you to understand calculus better and also it is a basic chapter of calculus. That is continuity and differentiability. In today's session, I will be discussing what is continuity. Before we go to that what is continuity, first I will make you thorough with the concepts of limits what you have already studied in 1st PUC or 11th. Now, 11th or 1st PUC will be in continuity, that is why we will thoroughly revise it. That is why we will step on to what continuity. This is the most important chapter of all chapters. In the first calculus, ಮೊದಲನೇ ಪಾಠ ಅತಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ವೈಟೇಜು ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಶಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ವಿಲ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಯು ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೀ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಹೈಯರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ರಿಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ ಸಿ ಯು ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಹೌ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಿ ಎ ನಾವು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಲಿಮಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಹೌ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ದಿಸ್ so we'll read this as what limit x tends to a how to read this limit x t and s tends to a limit x tends to a f of x means in the place of x we'll put a limit x tends to a f of x means what in the place of x we'll put a for example for example i have limit x tends to 2 5x minus 1 so this is the function 5x minus 1 is the function how to read this limit x tends to 2 5x minus 1 what is the meaning in the place of x put 2 so 5 into 2 minus 1 5 2 is a 10 10 minus 1 9 we will get an answer so limit x tends to f of x means in the place of x put a you will get f of a so this is not a problem but but your f of a provided your f of a should not be an indeterminate it should not be indeterminate what is meant by indeterminate it should not become meaningless means means for example i'll give like this limit x tends to 1 x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 now in the place of x put what 1 if you do that you'll get 1 square minus 1 by 1 minus 1 so it becomes 0 by 0 so 0 by 0 is an indeterminate this is an indeterminate it does not have any meaning in maths so you should not get forms like this so that's why we say that's why we say limit x tends to a f of x means f of a provided f of a should not be indeterminate f of a should not be indeterminate f of a is not an indeterminate means your f of a should not be it should not be equal to 0 by 0 infinity by infinity 0 pi over 0 like this you should not get any of this forms what we call this forms as indeterminate in mathematics some meaningless forms are there or some forms which will not get any value what is 0 by 0 nobody knows what is 0 7 is a 0 0 8 is a 0 someone will come and tell so 0 6 is a 0 0 3 is a 0 like that we cannot write any specific value 0 by 0 is meaningless form and we call that form as what indeterminate so when you apply limit when you apply limit you should not get indeterminate so whenever you apply limit you should not get what indeterminate new limit apply madadaga indeterminate barbardu so for example limit x tends to 1 x square plus 1 by x plus 5 now what is meant by limit x tends to 1 in the place of x put 1 so 1 square plus 1 divided by 1 plus 5 so it will become 2 by 6 so that is divided to 1 the 2 3 so 1 by 3 we will get now I applied limit and I got a value 1 by 3 which is specific value. It is not indeterminate. Suppose I will take one more example. 
so i'll take one more example that is limit x tends to 1 x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 in this in the place of x if i put 1 it will become 1 square minus 1 divided by 1 minus 1 it will become 0 by 0 but you should not get this form this is wrong means whenever you apply limit you should not get indeterminate so if you get indeterminate if i get like this then simplify the function then simplify the function and apply limit akasmat indeterminate bandre function na simplify maadi limit apply madbeku so now here if i apply in the place of x1 i am getting 0 by 0 so you cannot apply directly so the same problem will do like this limit x is tending to 1 x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 i'll simplify this first i'll simplify the function i'll take limit as it is limit x tends to 1 angrily so i'll simplify it is in the form 1 square. So, 1 can I write 1 square? Now, it is in the form a square minus b square. What is a square minus b square? a plus b into a minus b. So, numerator x square minus 1 can I write it as x plus 1 into x minus 1 divided by in denominator I have x minus 1. So, I will cancel x minus 1, x minus 1. Now, in the place of x, I will put 1. So, now I will take the function limit x tends to 1 x plus 1 means in the place of x, I will put 1. So, it will become 1 plus 1. What is 1 plus 1? 2. So, directly if you apply, you are getting 0 by 0. 0 by 0 is indeterminate. You should not get indeterminate. That's why this is wrong. So, first you simplify numerator. Numerator is x square minus 1 square. It is in the form a square minus b square. All of you know what is a square minus b square. What is a square minus b square? a plus b into a minus b. So, x square minus 1 can be written as x plus 1 into x minus 1. I will cancel x minus 1, x minus 1. Then I am left out with x plus 1. Now, in the place of x put 1, you will get a finite value. So, simple, simple, this is a concept what you already studied, um, in today's class we are recapitulation of limits, I am recapping, I am recollecting whatever we have studied already. So, now what is limit, how to read this, limit x tends to a, f of x, means what in the place of x put a, you will get f of a, provided your answer should not be indeterminate, your answer should not be 0 by 0 or any indeterminate form, if it is indeterminate simplify and apply limit. In order to simplify, I have done factorization. Sometimes we need to use theorems. So, we have learned theorem 1, sandwich theorem you studied in first year PUC and we have uh, some more theorems. What are the theorems we learned? The first theorem, we have limit x tends to a, x power n minus a power n divided by x minus a can be written as n into a power n minus 1. This is one of the theorem you learned in first PUC or 11th and one more theorem you have learned what is the other theorem limit theta tends to 0 limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is again what 1 and similarly we have one more that is limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta that is also what 1 so, these are the theorems you studied, you can apply any one of the theorems. The first one is what? Limit x tends to a x power n minus x, a power n by x minus a can be written as n into a power n minus 1. Limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is 1. Limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta is also 1. So, any of this you can apply. So, these are the theorems. Sometimes we need to factorize, sometimes we have to apply the theorems. Means, I am asking you to revise all the theorems what you studied in first year PUC or 11th standard. What is the first one? Limit x tends to a, x power n minus a power n by x minus a is n into a power n minus 1. What is limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta? 1. Limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta? 1. Sometimes we will factorize, sometimes we will use this formula. Now, going ahead, we will see some more problems based on this. Now, just I will summarize. Suppose if you have limit x tends to 3 x square plus 1 by 5 x minus 2. What is the meaning of this? Limit x tends to 3 means in the place of x put 3. So, we will do that. Then it will become 3 square plus 1 divided by 5 into 3 minus 2. So, 3 square is how much? 9. 9 plus 1 is how much? 10 divided by what? 5 3 is 15. 15 minus 2 that is 13. So, 10 by 13 I am getting, 3 square is 9, 9 plus 1, 10, 5, 3 is a 15, 15 minus 2 is 13. So, x tends to 3 means, in the place of x put 3, I have done it and I am getting a finite value. So, 10 by 13 is the answer. And second problem, suppose if they give or if you have a situation where we need to find limit x tends to 2, x square minus 4 divided by x minus 2. 
what is the meaning of limit extends to 2 in the place of x put 2 if you put 2 it will become 2 square minus 4 by 2 minus 2 you know 2 square minus 2 square is for 4 minus 4 it becomes 0 by 0 I told you when you apply limit you should not get this indeterminate form so you have to simplify the function now if I directly put x as 2 I am getting indeterminate so if you get indeterminate simplify the function how to simplify the function I can factorize limit extends to 2 x square minus 4 can be written as 2 square by x minus 2 further I can write limit extends to 2 numerator is in the form of a square minus b square what is a square minus b square it is a plus b into a minus b x square minus 2 square can be written as x plus 2 into x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 I can cancel x minus 2 x minus 2 now limit extends to 2 means in the place of x put 2 if you put 2 it will become 2 plus 2 what is 2 plus 2 4 so you got the value this is the meaning same problem we can also use the formula we can also use the formula I can use the formula n into a power n minus 1 theorem n means 2 2 into 2 power 2 minus 1 again you will get 2 into 2 that is 4 using formula using theorem we will get same what is the theorem what is the theorem we have limit extends to a x power n minus a power n by x minus a can be written as n into a power n minus 1 it is in the form x power n minus a power n by x minus a answer is n into a power n minus 1 n is 2 into 2 power 2 minus 1 you will get 4 or you factorize and do you will get 4 limit of a function is unique you should get same value always but it should not be indeterminate next so now we will take some sample problems before that we will talk about algebra of limits now I am talking about algebra of limits what is meant by algebra of limits algebra or we can also say properties of limits simple limit extends to f of x is equal to constant if f of x is constant interesting what is the first one limit extends to a f of x becomes k if f of x is k simple limit of a function if the function is constant is constant or limit of constant is constant all numbers are constants for example to make this property one easy we will take one example one example I will take limit extends to 3 5 now read this question what is this limit extends to 3 5 means what in the place of x put 3 do we have x here function they gave a constant function is constant so limit extends to 3 5 is 5 itself means simple limit of constant is constant I can also say this property one as limit extends to anything limit extends to a k is k provided k is constant means if your f of x is constant limit of constant is constant now answer my question so if I give limit extends to minus 1 19 what is the answer limit extends to minus 1 19 is 19 because limit of constant is constant if there is x you put x as minus 1 we don't have x so limit of constant is constant limit of a number is number itself so this is first property second property now so we are done with first one I will go to the second limit extends to a k into f of x k means any constant then you can take the constant outside and you can apply limit for the function for example for example if I give limit theta tends to 0 5 times sin theta by theta if I give limit theta tends to 0 in the place of theta I should put 0 but 5 is a number number is constant number is called as constant I can take 5 outside take the 5 outside take the constant outside and apply limit for the function limit theta tends to 0 apply for the function what is the function sin theta by theta now 5 into 5 into what is limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta 1 you have sandwich theorem here you don't put theta as 0 this is a standard value what are the theorems so in one of the theorem we call it a sandwich theorem so limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is exactly 1 this we proved it geometrically so this should remember so limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is 1 but 5 times it was so k is there means you can take constant outside k into f of x means take the constant outside and apply limit that is the second property then third property if you have sum of two functions if you have sum of two functions then you can apply limit for each function then you can apply limit for each function 
So if you have two different functions, you can apply limit for each function. Limit extends to f of x plus g of x is limit extends to f of x plus limit extends to a g of x. Then similarly, if you have difference of two functions, limit extends to a f of x minus g of x. If this is the problem, then you can apply limit separately for f of x minus you can apply separately for g of x limit extends to a f of x minus g of x is limit extends to a f of x minus limit extends to a g of x and fifth one is most important many times we'll use this limit extends to a if you have product of two functions if you have f of x into g of x you can apply limit separately for f of x into you can apply limit separately for g of x Whenever you have product of two functions, you can apply limit for each function. Limit extends to a f of x into g of x can be written as limit extends to a f of x into limit extends to a g of x. My dear students, become thorough with this property. Repeatedly, we'll use this property in many situations. Limit of product of two functions, if they give, you can apply limit for each function. Limit extends to a f of x into g of x, if they give, you can apply limit for f of x and you can apply limit for g of x. Limit extends to a f of x into g of x can be written as limit extends to a f of x into limit extends to a g of x. Then limit extends to a f of x by a g of x. If you have function divided by function, then you can apply limit separately for numerator and you can apply limit separately for denominator. Limit f of x by g of x can be written as limit f of x divided by limit g of x, provided denominator should not be zero, that's it. So most important concepts. So six properties I gave. First one, limit of constant is constant. Second one, limit of constant into function is there means take the constant outside into apply limit for function. Limit k into f of x is k into limit of f of x. Third one, if you have sum of two functions, you can apply limit for each function. Fourth one, if you have difference of two functions, you can apply limit for each function. Fourth, fifth one, if you have product of two functions, then you can apply limit for each function. If you have functions in the form of numerator by denominator or polynomial, sorry, rational functions, then you can apply limit separately for numerator, then you can apply limit separately for denominator. So these properties you remember, will be applying them to solve problems. So these are the things what you studied in your 11th standard and you should be very strong with this basics, then only you can understand the problems of limits and continuity. Now we have to study continuity, to study continuity first you should recollect what are limits. Next. Say we have a function like this, evaluate the following limits. We'll find the limits. What is this limit? X tends to 4, 4x plus 3 by x minus 2. How to read this first? Limit x tends to 4, 4x plus 3 by x minus 2. What does it mean? In the place of x put 4 and it should not give indeterminate. We'll check. So that is 4 into x is 4 plus 3 divided by 4 minus 2. 4 4 is 16, 16 plus 3 is 19 by 2. This is the value. So now you applied limit and you got, you got a finite value. Then limit x tends to 1 ax square plus bx plus c divided by cx square plus bx plus a. Now x tends to 1 means in the place of x put what 1. If you do that you will get a into 1 square plus b into 1 plus c divided by c into 1 square plus b into 1 plus a. Numerator becomes a plus b plus c. Denominator becomes c plus b plus a. All of you know addition is commutative. You can rearrange this. Numerator I will write a plus b plus c. Denominator I will rearrange them as a plus b plus c. Now I can cancel these two. a plus b plus c, a plus b plus c cancels. I will get 1. This is a value. And 1 is a specific or finite or unique value. We got 1. You should not get 0 by 0, you should not get infinity by infinity, you should not get 0 power 0, you should not get infinity minus infinity, they are all indeterminates. When you apply strictly, you should not get indeterminate. Next, evaluate limit extends to minus 3 in the place of x if you put minus 3. So we will try, if I put minus 3, minus 3 whole square minus 9 divided by minus 3 plus 3. So minus 3 whole square is positive 9, minus 9. 0, 0. I am getting 0 by 0. So this is an indeterminate form. 0 by 0 is what? Indeterminate form. So what I should do? I have to simplify this. I can rewrite it as limit x tends to minus 3 x square. Can I write it as x square minus 3 square? I will write divided by x plus 3. 
Now I'll factorize numerator. Numerator is in the form of a square minus b square. I'll write limit x tends to minus 3, let it be. Then I'll write it as x plus 3 into x minus 3 divided by x plus 3. Now I can cancel x plus 3 and x plus 3. Now in the place of x I'll put minus 3. Now I'm left out with limit x tends to minus 3 x minus 3. Now in the place of x I'll put minus 3. So I'll get minus 3 minus 3. So minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 is the answer. I hope all of you got this. The place of x if I put minus 3 it will become 0 by 0. So what I have done? I have uh, factorized. I wrote minus 3 square and I have factorized. That is one method. Next. Limit x tends to 3 x square minus 4 x by x minus 2. X tends to 3 means what? In the place of x put 3. If you do that 3 square minus 4 into 3 divided by 3 minus 2. 3 square is 9 minus 12 divided by 1. 9 minus 12 is minus 3. You got a value which is minus 3 possible. Next x tends 1 x cube minus 1. See you can use a cube minus b cube formula and factorize and simplify or use theorem. So theorem is better in this situation. It will make your process simple. What is the theorem? Limit x tends to a x power n minus a power n divided by x minus a. If problem is in this form you can use the theorem. What is the theorem? n into a power n minus 1. See here limit x is tending to 1. So if limit x is tending to 1 in the place of x if I put 1 it will become 1 cube minus 1 by 1 minus 1. It will become 0 by 0. But you should not get 0 by 0. 0 by 0 is what? Mathematical indeterminate. So I should not get that. So what I should do? So I will apply theorem. If I apply theorem can I write the problem as limit x tends to 1 x cube minus 1 can I write 1 as 1 cube divided by what x minus 1 observe now it is in the form x power n minus a power n by x minus a answer is what directly by theorem n into a power n minus 1 in this problem what is n n is 3 3 into in this problem what is a 1 power what 3 minus 1 so answer is what 3 into 1 square answer is what 3 into 1 answer is 3 that's it what is the alternate method for this? The same problem I can also do by factorization. All of you know a cube minus b cube. What is a cube minus b cube? a cube minus b cube can be written as a minus b into a square plus b square plus ab. So same thing I can do. I will take the problem limit x tends to 1. Numerator can I write it as x cube minus 1 cube by x minus 1. Now it is in the form of a cube minus b cube. Use the formula for a cube minus b cube. If you use the formula for a cube minus b cube. So numerator becomes a minus b into a square plus b square plus ab. So now divided by what I have x minus 1. I can cancel x minus 1 x minus 1. I will apply x plus 1. Now you apply limit x tends to 1. If you do that 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 into 1. So it will again become 3. Again it will become what 3. So either you can use theorem. What is theorem? Limit x tends to a x power n minus a power n by x minus a is n into a power n minus 1. This is better. So your process will be faster. And for power anything you can apply this. For rational number integer you can apply. And but this is restricted. If you know formula that is if you know factorization a cube minus b cube you can factorize and apply. Directly in the place of x if you put 1 you will get 0 by 0 and you should never get 0 by 0. 0 by 0 is what? Indeterminate. When you apply limit you should not get indeterminate. Because you are getting indeterminate use theorem. What is theorem? Limit x tends to a x power n minus a power n by x minus a is what? n into a power n minus 1. Please memorize this properly. And you already used it in your 11th standard or first year PUC. So apply the same and get the answer. Next we have problems like this. So I can again use formula. So limit x tends to 5 x power 6 minus 5 power 6 divided by x minus 5 is given. 
So in the place of x, if you put 5, it become 5 power 6 minus 5 power 6 divided by 5 minus 5. Directly in the place of x, if you put 5, you will get 0 by 0. I told you, you should not get an indeterminate form like this. So what you should do, use the theorem. You can observe it is in the form x power n minus a power n by x minus a. This can be written as n into a power n minus 1. What is n here? 6, 6 into 5 power 6 minus 1. So it become what? 6 into 5 power 5. Further you can simplify. 5 power 5 means 5 5 is 25 5 is 125 like that. 5 multiply 5 times and then you multiply with 6 you will get the answer. Next. Limit theta tends to 0 sin 4 theta by theta. Now suppose in the place of theta if you put 0 it will become what? Sin 4 times 0 divided by 0. Sin 4 times 0 means sin 0. Sin 0 by 0. You know, sin 0 is 0. 0 by 0. You should not get 0 by 0. When I directly apply limit, I am getting 0 by 0. I should not get. So, use theorem. What is the theorem you studied? Sandwich theorem you studied in your 11th. Limit theta tends to 0. Sin theta by theta is what? 1. What is the meaning of this? Meaning is interesting. So, if this value and denominator and this, if these three are same and if this is tending to 0, answer is 1. What is the formula? Limit theta tends to 0, sin theta by theta is 1. Means inside sin whatever is present should be denominator. Inside sin what you have? Theta. That should be the denominator. And that should tend to 0. Then answer is 1. So, now here I will reduce it. So, I will take limit theta tends to 0. Numerator I have sin 4 theta. But denominator I have what? Theta. What is inside sign? 4 theta. Here also I need what? 4 theta. So divide and multiply by 4. Directly don't apply. I will divide and multiply. 4 by 4. 4 by 4 if it cancels it will be same. I am introducing 4. Divide and multiply by 4. Now we have a property. What is the property I taught you? If you have k into f of x you can take the constant outside and you can apply limit for the function. So now you can see 4 is the constant. Take 4 outside. I will take 4 outside and then I will apply limit theta tends to 0 sin 4 theta divided by 4 theta. Here I am treating this as constant, take it out and inside sign I have 4 theta, that's why denominator I will retain 4 theta and interesting thing is tends to is like is equal to. If theta is tending to 0, multiply 4 on both sides, 4 theta tends to 4 times 0. So what is 4 times 0? So 4 theta tends to 0. If theta tends to 0, 4 theta tends to what? 0. So multiply 4 on both sides, I will have 4 into limit of Multiply 4 and both sides, limit 4 theta tends to 0, sin 4 theta divided by 4 theta. Now, that is 4 into, see you can see, this is 4 theta, this is 4 theta, this is 4 theta. It is in the form, limit theta tends to 0, sin theta by theta. So, using sandwich theorem, this whole thing becomes 1. So, 4 into 1 is 4, that's it. I made denominator as 4 by dividing and multiplying. Now it is 4 theta by 4 theta and if theta is tending to 0, 4 theta also tends to 0. So limit 4 theta tends to 0, sin 4 theta by 4 theta becomes how much? 1. So outside we had 4, 4 into 1 becomes 4. I hope all of you understood. These are the basics what you have already learned and which you should become thorough to continue with more problems. Next. See now limit theta tends to 0 to tan theta by 3. In the place of theta, if you put 0, tan 0 is 0. Here denominator, 3 0 is 0, sin 0 is 0, you will get 0 by 0. In the place of theta, if you put 0, you will get 0 by 0, it is indeterminate. So simplify. How to simplify? First I will take 2 out. 2 is a constant, take the constant outside the function. Limit theta tends to 0. I have tan theta divided by sin 3 theta. So I will introduce theta. You know the formula tan theta by theta and sin theta by theta. So, I will divide numerator and denominator by theta. Divide numerator and denominator by what? Theta. If you do that, we will get limit theta tends to 0. Numerator becomes tan theta by theta. Denominator becomes sin 3 theta by theta. We have also learnt a property. What is the property I taught you? If you have limit of f of x by g of x, then you can apply limit separately for numerator. You can apply limit separately for denominator. That's what we'll do here. Now apply limit separately for numerator. So limit theta tends to 0. What is numerator? Tan theta by theta. Then you can apply limit separately for denominator. What is denominator? Limit theta tends to 0 sin 3 theta by theta. 
Now numerator is in standard form. Numerator is in the form limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta. Limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta is 1. We have a theorem. And here this is 3 theta. 3 is missing. So before you apply limit reduce it. Let limit theta tends to be 0. I will sign 3 theta is there. Denominator I have theta. So I will divide and multiply by 3. Then numerator is 1. So here I will write limit 3 theta tends to 0 and I'll take 3 outside this is constant like last problem sin 3 theta by 3 theta now denominator 1 by 3 into 1 it will become limit 3 theta tends to 0 sin 3 theta by 3 theta is what 1 using sandwich theorem so final answer you will get 1 by 3 but already we have outside 1 2 this 2 continues this 2 is constant I took it out so this 2 continues numerator is 2 2 into 1 2 into 1 so it will become 2 by 3 final answer is 2 by 3 I hope all of you understood what we have done now. We used two theorems what we learned. Limit extends to a x power n minus a power n by x minus a is n into a power n minus 1. And we use limit theta tends to 0 sin theta by theta is 1. And limit theta tends to 0 tan theta by theta is 1. So all these things you are familiar in 11th. But by this time you would have forgot. And just I have done a recapitulation of all these things. Because this is very much required to understand continuity. Now, in my next session, I have to teach you what is continuity, how to prove continuous functions, how to prove a function is continuous without drawing any graph. If I draw a graph, you can say whether it's continuous or not. Without drawing graph, by using technique of limit, how to prove continuity, that's what we'll be discussing in my next session. But now, we have done so many problems. Each problem, I explained the technique. But before when I started, I told this is a recapitulation section. I recapitulated all the things of limits what you studied. First properties. So six properties I wrote. Please revise them. And we have done some basic problems and recollect them and attend my next session. In my next session, I will be teaching you what? Definition of continuity and how to prove continuity using the concept of limits. I will see you till then. Bye.